this situation unfolding here. Really, if you're just tuning in, the NYPD has moved in on the protesters at Columbia University. We came on the air around 920. And if you see that vehicle in the background there, if you're just joining us, uh, we saw 50 officers or so enter the campus uh, through the window up that ramp. And the university had called them to come in as the situation, they say, uh, was escalating. We know that overnight, protesters made their way uh, into Hamilton Hall. They brought in barricades. They broke through windows. We also understand, according to police today, there were training sessions happening among the protesters in the encampment. And we just saw a bus going by as well. We're keeping our eyes on this situation. We know the NYPD looks like more officers heading toward our cameras on 114th Street as well, Checky, if you can still hear me. Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing it. And as you mentioned, that's a different gate than where we're at. Uh, we're mm -hmm. at 116. So the gate okay. that you're seeing, no wonder you're saying you're, you're saying you're seeing someone being taken out. Uh, that's another camera okay. uh, at another gate. So it looks like they're not bringing them out of the main gates where most of the activity has been centered um, because of possibly because of the large crowd here. Uh, this is where everything had been centered for, for the most part. So it looks like they're trying to uh, take them out of a gate where there's just not a lot of okay. people, obviously, uh, not a lot of these protesters. And, and, and because a lot of people here are yelling, shame, shame. Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, I have talked to somebody who works at the university. He didn't want to go on camera. Who's standing right next to me? Uh, basically said it's unbelievable and and mm -hmm. and, and, and just shameful. Uh, but it's hard to get anyone uh, nearby to say anything. Uh, some mm -hmm. of them say that they fear you know repercussions through the university mm -hmm. and, and and so forth. So um, yeah. So a lot of people here are though just waiting uh, to see what's going to happen next. Okay, that's where you are. I understand, Chucky. Okay, let's get back to Terry Monahan. Uh, Terry, you know we know the office officers are now inside. We did see a couple people come out and it, with their hands zip tied behind. It, it looked like they had arrested a, a couple people and taken them into custody at the very top of this situation when we first turned our cameras on here, walking them out near the gates. But what can you tell us about what what's happening right now? They should be putting everyone together into one room. Everyone should be uh, Basically, you saw an NYPD bus go by before. That should be brought onto the campus. Mm -hmm. uh, I would expect them to be loading people within the campus grounds onto the buses, those that are going to be arrested. This way, they can be easily transported out of the scene without mm -hmm. having to walk past, you know, whatever protesters may be out on the street at this point. And now <laughs> is to make sure that... Uh, Whoever the arresting officers are, they identify who they're arresting. They know what they did, where they were arrested, uh, to make sure as you go through the legal process that everything is, uh, you know, every T is crossed and every I is dotted so that uh, they can be prosecuted. Okay, Terry, is, is that a, that looks like a drone that we're looking at right now. Can you see this footage here? I, I can't see the drone at this point in time, but... Uh, okay. You would have the drone up to be able to monitor everything. Okay. So this is for the commanders. It goes right to their phones. They can look on the phone, uh, direct that drone to anything that's going on in the area, any protests that may be going yeah. to the outskirts at this point in time. Because as you push people away, uh, they may be looking to protest, and you want to make sure no one tries to circle back in to a back angle or anything like that. Uh, Terry, I have another question. So what does it look like as we keep our eyes on this situation? Say they do remove the protesters as they were asked. What does it look like to prevent more protesters from getting back onto campus? What does that situation look like? That's going to be up to Columbia's public safety team. Okay. They have to control the entrance to who's going to be allowed on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, those that are supposedly suspended and expelled have to not be allowed back on the campus. Uh, it's going to be a big task for their public safety to keep their property controls. Uh, NYU built walls around certain areas to prevent people from coming in. That's what has to do. Uh, their public safety team needs a plan to make sure that they have complete and total control of the university going in now. I would I would feel that they can be very limited on who's going to be allowed into the campus, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to really have to control it very, very tightly over the next uh, couple of days. And our photojournalist was able to, what we're looking at right now, Terry, he was able to zoom in through the gate there. And this is Checky Beckford's camera. I believe she has photojournalist Will Caldwell with her right now. Right, Checky? 
Yeah, it's uh, Will Caldwell in Houston, and I'm not sure which camera uh, you're looking at, but I do see through the gate, even with my naked eye, uh, a lot of people uh, down there toward the quad, I believe, or the courtyard. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of police officers, it looks like, looks like and uh, I can't exactly tell who, if there are any protesters, but it there definitely look like, looks like there's been a lot of movement and follows in line with what Terry was talking about, the idea that uh, they're also rounding up people in the in the, uh, in the encampment as well. Uh, they have not brought them through this gate uh, at this point. They brought them through the 114 gate. Uh, but again, as he mentioned, this, there's a large crowd out here, a large uh, crowd. They've been singing. They've been um, shouting. Uh, things have remained peaceful so far. Uh, but obviously, they do not want to bring, uh, apparently at this point, bring those, uh, those people from the encampment or from the building out this way through in front of the crowd. And I know we haven't ever received a final number of how many protesters have been inside that encampment, but we do know, just checking from the sheer number of officers that you saw going in, it looked like 50 or more that went up through the ramp and through the windows there. How many? Yeah, about 50 or more, and then, of course, that went on up the ramp. But also, mm -hmm. we're talking about the officers here on the ground yes. that are basically just standing guard uh, in front of the barricades here and in front of this large group uh, mm -hmm. behind me and, and around me, um, obviously making sure that they, too, don't uh, don't breach the barricade and, 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 again, lock the gates as they have been uh, for several days now. Checky, thank you. We're going to let you keep an eye on that situation. I want to get back to Chief Investigative Reporter Jonathan Deans. John, you've been monitoring this with us all evening long. As, as you're looking at this video, uh, as you're hearing from your NYPD sources, we're zooming in, we're seeing the officers armed with the zip ties there. Uh, kind of, what are you thinking as you're watching this video right well, now? See, what I'm thinking is that here on Amsterdam Avenue, in this area where Checky is, it seems that police have uh, secured much of the perimeter. We have different feeds with different images coming in uh, that still show. Uh, some of the protesters active uh, what may be on the Broadway side and you can hear the chants through uh, uh, Checky's uh, microphone with that Will Caldwell uh, where he's filming uh, and you saw some of the uh, camera angle as he shot through the gates there the police uh, securing inside the campus in the quad area and uh, again we don't know how long it is taking yet for police to get through the Hamilton Hall and uh, whether they have uh, in fact secured the entire building by now you would think they have given just the sheer number of police officers who went into mm -hmm. that building and uh, as you see at least from this camera angle uh, where Checky is located uh, things are uh, appear to be pretty uh, under control there. Uh, the question is inside the building and perhaps in other parts of the campus, uh, where do things stand? Well, important to note also that Columbia is not the only campus that's been mm -hmm. seeing uh, these sorts of demonstrations. Uh, uh, up at uh, City College, they've had some uh, issues as well uh, over the last uh, week, if not longer, and uh, police have been dealing with uh, a smaller situation there. But it really seems, at least here in Manhattan, uh, Columbia has been uh, a hotbed uh, for this protest activity and uh, the, um, the police responding given the letter uh, that Columbia sent to police uh, earlier this evening in the nine mm -hmm. o'clock hour uh, to move in and uh, regain control of the campus from again uh, student protesters as well as outside uh, as the mayor has called them outside agitators uh, the mayor again saying this must end now in terms of uh, his statements earlier this evening and obviously the board of trustees at Columbia along with the president making the decision to invite the NYPD in to uh, 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 make this move while professors groups and, and some of the protesters obviously not at all happy about that decision uh, made this evening. John, thank you. We're getting another angle here. This is some new video just coming in that we have here. This is 114th and Broadway. It's a little bit shaky, the camera, but you're seeing the NYPD response. As John said, what we heard from Checky shot you here. The chance as well from spectators in the area. Officers moved in right around 920, shortly after 9 o'clock. We saw it live on our cameras. And just take a second as you're looking at these images. We know how the tensions have been happening, not only at Columbia, as Jonathan said, but all across the country at a time when 
graduation is supposed to be happening. We know that there were concerns about could graduation even happen with this situation, trying to clear the protesters out in time for that. And as far as a safety situation right now, imagine if you're a student at Columbia. Uh, police saying that security officials sent out the shelter in place alert that's in effect right now for Columbia University. We know two college deans sent an urgent update earlier tonight. I'd say it was right around nine o'clock when I saw that in my email asking the students to stay safe and to avoid the public areas on and around campus. And you're seeing the NYPD response. We have News Force Chucky Beckford there. I hear you, Chucky, talking about the ambulances coming by. Yeah, it looks like Columbia University um, uh, ambulance. And we earlier, I had actually seen uh, two uh, paramedics um, walking across the street in front of the gate uh, to the right here, where uh, some of those protesters ha that initially were moved from in front of the gate had been had been placed. So mm -hmm. it's unclear right now uh, what the situation is. But we've seen now this is the second ambulance, uh, two ambulances now um, driving up in front of uh, in front of the gate here, um, and it's unclear who's been hurt or or if any. Anyone has been physically hurt or if there's just a medical emergency at this point, we have no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did see a couple of uh, paramedics uh, in the area earlier and then uh, now these two ambulances. Well, and, and, you know, Checky, I know we're hearing people chant behind you. You said a couple of folks were nervous to talk to you. But, you know, what are people next to you saying about what they're seeing, seeing the NYPD respond in this way? <laughs> Honestly, they're not saying anything now. Okay. I'm going to have a photojournalist Will Caldwell kind of pan over here mm -hmm. to the right, to the right here, so that so that you can see um, the people and the crowd over here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of really just silence. Uh, a mm -hmm. lot of people just watching. I think they were pretty much as shocked about this as as we were mm -hmm. um, uh, when it all happened. Even though we kind of knew to anticipate this that this was a possibility, a very likely possibility after hearing uh, that news conference earlier from the uh, the mayor and the police commissioner uh, that th they were there was a good chance that they were going to be moving in. Uh, the mm -hmm. language sounded like that was what was going to happen at some point once they got the, the go-ahead from Columbia. Uh, but still, seeing it happen, seeing it unfold, uh, uh, you know, quite, uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, astounding um, to see it happen uh, in, in, in front of you. And right now, uh, we're hearing some chants, obviously, with chanting and so forth, but really, no one's mm -hmm. really saying much. Uh, <laughs> they're really looking at the phones, they're shooting They're shooting video, they're, uh, and, and so forth, but no one's really saying much. And, and again, it's hard to really get people to talk on camera. A lot of them have on masks, um, mm -hmm. a lot of these supporters, and they don't want to. One of them, you know, said, you know, I don't want to be expelled. expelled. Uh, okay. So. What, what Chucky, as we know, it's captured their attention like it's captured ours and really the attention of the entire company, or excuse me, the entire country as these tensions have been arising in the area. If you're just joining us, what we've been showing here for almost, I would say, about 45 minutes to 50 minutes, the NYPD has moved into the campus at Columbia University. That's where the pro-Palestinian protesters had occupied that building there. This was after Columbia U sent a letter to the NYPD asking them to act. Now, we knew, we knew for a while this was a possibility. Earlier tonight, police had stated in a press conference they'd be ready when the university called them. Again, police releasing video late today showing some of those protesters that had broken into Hamilton Hall on campus overnight who'd busted windows. We saw video of them pushing barricades into the building. And Mayor Adams saying earlier, this must end now. There's that video, if you didn't get to see this earlier. This was of the officers going in through the window of the building because when we first came on the air, we saw all the protesters at the gate. So they cleared the protesters from the gate that were outside. And then we saw at least 50 plus NYPD officers going in through the window there. And both Mayor Adams and the NYPD stressing that it's been external actors, they believe, who've attempted to hijack this protest that's gone on for a little over two weeks now. All right, you're taking another look at this video. If you're just joining us now, you're seeing the NYPD entering. This is, this is file video, correct, guys? This is from earlier. This is from earlier. If you didn't see it earlier, they pulled up in their tactical vehicle. They opened the ramp. Our own Checky Beckford said it sounded like a large boom. We didn't know what happened at first, but they were basically positioning that vehicle over the curb, setting up the ramp to get those NYPD officers in to respond.
uh, former chief of department, Terry Monahan, had told us once they get in there, their goal was to peacefully get the protesters, the protest situation under control. And we know as for the protesters that broke windows and broke into Hamilton Hall, we know there are charges they talked about. Police talked about earlier they could face burglary, trespassing, criminal mischief in the building as well. We have another reporter on the scene. We have Ida Siegel joining us now from another angle. Ida, where are you exactly? Natalie, I'm on the corner of Amsterdam Avenue and 113th Street. We actually just walked over here as best we could from where the main action is coming from. That's 116th Street, where you've been hearing from Checky Beckford. I want to show you what it looks like here. We are sort of on the outskirts of the protest. However, we have at least a few hundred people here gathered at this corner viewing down or rather north on Amsterdam Avenue and I can tell you that their view from here are two very large NYPD buses and mm -hmm. it is on those buses where the protesters who were arrested a couple blocks north are being loaded on. We've seen, I've seen personally at least two dozen protesters in plastic handcuffs um, likely there are more and they are being loaded on these buses as they're being taken away. Um, I know Checky has described a rather chaotic scene at 116th Street. I witnessed the same thing myself. We tried to exit that area to come to a media zone that was established by the NYPD on Broadway and 114th Street, which is also completely shut down. But it is very difficult to get around this area right now, even on foot. There are barricades at almost every single in intersection. There are hundreds of police officers on every intersection, and there are protesters everywhere. And if you can believe it, it seems like the number of protesters might have even increased since this all went down. When we were on 116th Street and Amsterdam, there was a pen right in front of the gates to Columbia where all of the protesters were concentrated. It was right next to Hamilton Hall, mm -hmm. and there were maybe about 200 to 200 protesters in that pen, and it mm -hmm. was peaceful. It was somewhat organized. And then once the police moved in and decided to move out everybody from that area and especially the protesters who had barricaded themselves inside Hamilton Hall, that's when everything changed. That's when people started running. That's when everyone pulled out their cell phones to start recorded. The chanting got louder and it was a truly chaotic scene at that moment. Now, people who did not want to be arrested have dispersed to other corners, some of them forcibly, some of them voluntarily. And this is one of the sort of perimeter areas where people have moved. And we're hearing protesters behind me now, um, someone with a blow horn mm -hmm. who's chanting uh, the typical pro-Palestinian protest that we've heard in the last week or so. I'm not really sure if people are moving. We see some police officers moving. All of this has been an extremely fluid situation, but I can tell you that it's actually mm -hmm. starting to rain, mm -hmm. um, and that might work in the favor of police officers who really want all of these people to disperse and go home. And it might just be the case that Mother Nature will mm -hmm. help the NYPD accomplish that goal, Natalie. Well, Ida, can you tell me, I know Checky said that a lot of folks were mostly quiet where she was, besides the chanting, nobody really wanted to talk to our cameras. Have you, have you chatted with anybody? What are, they, what are they feeling like? What are they saying to you besides the protesters? I, pardon me, while the NYPD moves through, mm -hmm. it looks like they're trying to get down 113th Street behind me mm -hmm. here. There is a, to, to complicate matters more, there is Mount Sinai Medical Center, which is right here mm -hmm. on the corner. Um, they've got ambulances that need to get through, mm -hmm. and it looks like the police right now are trying to escort an ambulance to get through. So okay. that's just another dynamic in this entire situation. But yes, I have not be able, been able to speak to anybody one-on-one, -on -one, but I have heard what they are screaming to police, and a lot of them are screaming the word shame. A lot mm -hmm. of them are saying how disappointed they are. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people say, I can't believe this is America. This is the most outrageous thing I've ever witnessed. Things of that nature is what we're hearing just spouting out around us as we move around this area.
So still hearing protests uh, in that area where you are. Ida, thank you for that look right now. We want to get back to, uh, we want to go to Chief Investigative Reporter Jonathan Deans. Do we have John back on? John, do you have new information for us? Yeah, we just reached an NYPD spokesman who mm -hmm. says there are no reported injuries so far. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke with another senior police official who says inside Hamilton Hall, police have now reached the top floor and they are clearing the last floor, the top floor of Hamilton Hall. And the reason why it's taking some time mm -hmm. is because the hallways were lined with soda machines, couches, barricades were set mm -hmm. up, chairs. So police had to work their way through dismantling the barricades and to go room by room, floor by floor, to uh, make the arrests of uh, those who had taken over that building. Again, no reported injuries. Uh, the one thing we may want to note is also there were flashbangs. Uh, Checky spoke about some bangs she heard. Uh, it could have been when uh, police had set up that ramp to go in through the window mm -hmm. that they set off those distraction flashbangs to uh, distract uh, the, the demonstrators who might be inside so that they could enter safely and then move on. Uh, there was no tear gas used, according to an NYPD spokesman, just the flashbangs to serve as a distraction as police moved in. And uh, there may have been some used in other parts of the campus as police sought to get control. Uh, there have been dozens of arrests. It is too soon to know any specific number. As we've seen in some of the pictures that we had, police literally have been uh, bringing in buses mm -hmm. to take away the arrestees. So there will be dozens and dozens of arrests, we presume. And again, the charges are expected to be anywhere from trespassing to burglary to vandalism, uh, depending on uh, where the arrests took place. Again, uh, the protests outside on the public streets are being allowed to continue. This is Columbia University calling for police to come in and take over uh, and secure uh, their campus, which had been taken over uh, by the protesters. So we've seen police activity again on along Amsterdam, uh, along Broadway, uh, moving in to uh, secure uh, inside campus. But the reason why you're still hearing chants and protests outside is because those who are lawfully assembled and protesting outside the campus are allowed to continue. And as I just said, the rain is starting to come down, as you see in that video of that line of police officers, uh, which we we'll should to see if that has any effect on the crowd that has gathered outside of campus. So again, the very latest update, no injuries reported. Police are inside Hamilton Hall still uh, securing the building, working their way through barricades of soda machines, couches, chairs, uh, hallways filled with uh, debris. Uh, as they work their way, they've uh, cleared uh, most of the floors. They are now, I'm mm -hmm. told, on the top floor, and there are numerous protesters or uh, mm -hmm. folks occupying the building on the top floor there, and police will be making additional arrests once they uh, clear the hall and uh, are able to go room to room on that last top floor of Hamilton Hall. And John, just to clarify too, we do expect them to go into the encampments as well, not just Hamilton Hall. The, the uh, university had called for the protesters to be cleared, and that is our understanding that yes, okay. uh, any of the demonstrations that were improper on campus are being cleared. And that the university had asked all students who are on campus to stay in their dorms, stay in their housing, mm -hmm. uh, because this police action was going to be taken. And again, an NYPD spoke says as of now no injuries reported and that the bangs you may have heard uh, were flashbangs used as a distraction as police tried to enter Hamilton Hall. John, thank you. We'll get back to you shortly. Ten after ten right now, the NYPD has moved in on the protesters at Columbia University. We have our crews on the ground bringing you complete coverage this evening. You're taking a live look here at the NYPD, uh, walking the streets surrounding Columbia University. We know the protesters have now moved outside the university. We know some who were at the outside gate made their way toward Ida Siegel and also back toward News Force Checky Beckford. Checky, we're going to check back in with you.
Yeah, Nat, we're still here. It, it, this, Ida kind of predicted uh, this happening, but it is raining here, and it is, it's raining uh, <laughs> relatively even pace, and we've seen some of the protesters actually clear out. The crowd uh, looks much thinner than it was before, uh, so uh, it looks like that uh, has had an impact. Mother Nature um, stepping in to sort of, uh, sort of, sort of help ease the situation to a certain amount. Uh, I want to show you, though, uh, Hugh, Hugh Snedden, my photojournalist Hugh Snedden, is focused right now on the pedestrian bridge over for Amsterdam Avenue, which is basically just a little uh, to the right of the gate here, the front gate. And you can see a, a number of people, I'd say dozens of people standing on that bridge right now. Uh, they've been there probably for the last, I would say, 15 minutes or so. And okay. uh, they were, at one point, some of them were chanting. It's unclear if they were just students or if they were some of the protesters that have now taken up a new position. Uh, but yes, uh, okay. they, they're standing in the rain out here as well, along with a number of the, pro of, of the spectators and protesters tonight. Okay, I don't know whose camera we have right here, but we're kind of getting a shot of the ground here. I don't know if they could pan up for us. We were uh, there. We go. There's the shot of the bridge. Okay, there it is. That Jackie, speak to that one more time. Now that we have the shot of the bridge up. Okay, yeah, yeah, Nat. So that bridge is, uh, but it looks like a pedestrian bridge across mm -hmm. Amsterdam Avenue, uh, and uh, it, it's you can see what looks like dozens of people standing up there. Uh, it mm -hmm. looks like some of them are students. It looks like some of them have masks on, which we have seen uh, characteristic of a number of the protesters. So it looks and some chants have been have been coming from that area as well. Uh, they've been there for probably the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, they don't seem to be deterred by the rain. It actually looks like that crowd has grown a little bit. Uh, but the crowd here on the ground around us has definitely begun to thin out as a result of the, the weather. Checky, thank you. We will let you stay there on scene. We want to get back to News 4's Ida Siegel because we know Ida's over there on the other side. Ida, has the situation changed at all where you are? Um, I know you can't see me quite on camera. Oh. Okay, I don't know if Ida can hear me right now, but I just want to take a moment. Uh, since we first learned of this shortly after 9 o'clock, we did get a statement in the past 30 minutes from Columbia University on why they called in police tonight and made the decision. This was something that at one point was expected, especially earlier tonight, uh, when police said that if they got the call, they would move in. But basically, part of the statement from Columbia University reads that the leadership team, including the Board of Trustees, met throughout the night and early into the morning, consulting with security experts and law enforcement to determine the best plan to protect our students and the entire Columbia community. They said they made the decision early in the morning that this was a law enforcement matter and that the NYPD were best positioned to determine and execute an appropriate response. So we can assume making the decision early in the morning was after that break-in at Hamilton Hall overnight. Okay, I think News Force Ida Seal can hear me now. Ida. Yes, I hear you, Natalie. Yeah, we're back at the same corner, 113th in Amsterdam. Uh, there's a few hundred people at this intersection sort of dispersed on both sides of the street. And what they're chanting right now and what they've been chanting for the last, I'd say, five minutes or so is, let the students go. Um, presuming that the majority of people who are being arrested are students, let the students go is what these folks are chanting uh, on this inter at this intersection. Um, interestingly, we heard from Mayor Adams earlier today and the police commissioner that they believe that the folks who had broken into Hamilton Hall were not students, um, and presumably they were the prime targets for the NYPD when going in and making arrests, especially especially in the building that had been occupied and sort of escalated the uh, tension on campus and the protests and the call from university officials to have the NYPD come in and ultimately clear campus. That said, while they may have arrested those so-called professional agitators that the NYPD says was known to them, that uh, has participated in similar protests mm -hmm. around the country, mm -hmm. despite the arrests of the so-called professionals, there have been arrests of many, many students that mm -hmm. we've witnessed. I witnessed one woman who was being carried out by four separate officers, one officer on each limb of her body as she was being brought mm -hmm. down Amsterdam Avenue. She clearly did not follow a direction to leave and did not want to go. So that's okay. what they're dealing with here. And yes, we still have numerous crowds here on 113th Street. Natalie. All right, Ida Siegel, we thank you well amid rising tensions across the company. We know the NYPD has moved in tonight on protesters at Columbia University.